Good evening friends and folks. Welcome to my Insta live and today I'm going to talk about everything that you would like to know about hair fall, hair loss, hair thinning. I think we're going to wait for a couple of seconds and minutes for everyone to join. Since we all are living through COVID pandemic, if not suffering from it essentially, here as usual has been badly, badly affected uh, by the pandemic as well. Skin and hair. We always talk and I always talk that skin and hair is a barometer of your inner health. So every skin talks to you and the hair also gives you sometimes the first signals of the condition of your internal environment. Do you know friends that the hair matrix cells are one of the most rapidly multiplying cells in our body. Yes, you heard it right. We have stem cells in the root of the hair follicle. Now, what exactly is the root of the hair follicle? Is it the root that you see when you put your oil? Is it the root at the place where you do your hair spa and you do your hair massage? No, your hair roots are located pretty deep within the skin and it has got a small niche of stem cells which continue to divide, multiply, replicate, leading to hair growth almost all through the years we live. Hence, they are very, very susceptible to the internal conditions of our body. And that's why your hair loss or your hair thinning could be first, first, one of the first few signals that your body gives. So that's the reason I always say in all my lives and all my videos that it is a barometer of your internal health. Hair is very susceptible and sensitive to the internal and external conditions. But at the same time, I would say it's a pretty hardy organ. Why? Why do I say that? Because most of the times my patients ask me, my followers ask me, the doctor, please tell me a shampoo or an oil that I should take care, use to get rid of my hair fall. My dear friends, there is no shampoo that can pluck the hair out of the dermal papilla, the seed from where the hair actually grows. So there are lots and lots of myths, noise, good information, bad information available on internet. So the very idea of having you all together in this live session is please ask me any query, any doubt, any concern you always wanted to know about your hair. How to take care of your hair health, how to take care of your hair texture, how to prevent premature graying. These are the few things that we'll be talking about. So before we start taking the questions, I would like to tell you that as I talked, hair is one of the most rapidly growing organ and there are uh, there are a good repository of stem cells. Stem cells means they continue to divide, multiply and work throughout your life. So your hair has got three main phases. Of so first is the growth phase. A hair takes approximately three years to grow from its root. After growing for a period of three years, it stays in your follicle for approximately a month and then it stays dead in the hair follicle for three months before finally it comes out when you take your head wash or you comb your hair. So these phases are known as anagen phase, catagen phase and the telogen phase. So we never realize that hair is rapidly growing through our body like this because the scalp contains 80 to 90 percent of hairs in a normal condition when you don't have any hair issues and around 5 to 10 percent stays in the resting phase or telogen phase. So this is the mismatch in the ratio of anagen and telogen is what generally leads to excessive shedding of hair as we are commonly seeing. So I have my uh, you know today is a day where we're going to demystify and learn more about hair. So Vinita wants to know how to stop gray hair. Vinita, it's very important to understand, as I said, that the hair grows from deep within the body and your hair root is supplied by your blood vessels. It also has got those small fat pockets which are telling what is the exact uh, status of nutrition in your body. So the commonest reason of gray hair is, of course, genetics. Yes, there are families in which early graying is very common. Nutritional deficiency is another very important cause of graying of hair. 
and so is stress sleeping late at night too much of mental stress too much of you know there could be auditory stress as well so it's been seen that people who stay near homes where there's a lot of noise so i would say urban folks who are staying almost on near a highway would actually that kind of auditory stress also impact the color of the hair Shweta wants to know that she has got extremely dry hair and they always look tangled. Shweta, I must tell you first and foremost is the way you apply your shampoo. Please do not apply shampoo on the hair. Always apply shampoo on the scalp and make sure that you always wash your hair with hair down. Do not heap your hair up. Now while choosing a shampoo I did put a video on my YouTube how to read the label of a shampoo you can go in for two in one shampoos especially the ones which have conditioners in it go for a sulfate and parabens free shampoo but my dear friends remember that if you're using a sulfate and parabens free shampoo then you need to use it a little more and use it more regularly then twice a week may not be enough so you might have to wash your scalp uh maybe alternate days but go for a mild shampoo go for a pa uh, parabens and sulfate free shampoo look for a label of the shampoo it should have some conditioning agents like cocamido propyl betaine there are silicon containing conditioners hydrolyzed uh, keratin uh, you know is one very important thing that you should look in for try to always couple your shampooing of scalp with conditioning of hair So I hope that helps you. So you have to put a conditioner on your hair while you apply your shampoo on the scalp. So Ulfi wants to know: Is Cosmilan good for skin? Ulfi, yes. Though this is not the topic for uh, our discussion today, Cosmilan would take care of your pigmentation issues for a year or so. But you know, you need to maintain it, and it is a little bit of tedious process. But sometimes it's all worth it. So Shweta also wanted to know which oil. Shweta, I am a die-hard fan of a big old coconut oil because that is the only oil that can penetrate into the cortex. So your hair shaft has got a medulla, a cortex, and the outer is the cuticle. So the cuticle is the thing that gets damaged due to you know blow drying, due to combing, due to uh, hair styling, and cortex is the in actual thing that gives strength to your hair root. So coconut oil is the only oil that has been. shown to penetrate into the cortex and actually replace there is a very thin layer of omega 3 outside your hair sh uh, shaft so coconut oil could also help you to replenish and of course i cannot emphasize the importance of good amount of omega 3 in your diet if you want to take care of frizziness So Mansi would like to know how to prevent premature graying. Vinita had just asked Mansi the commonest cause is nutritional deficiency. So you need to check your iron, your vitamins, your protein levels. You need to rule out any deficiency. But there is no rule of any shampoo or oil in preventing or treating premature graying. Dandruff of course Mansi is a scalp issue. Your scalp just like other parts of your skin is, you know, we shed our skin normally. so dandruff happens when there is an imbalance there and there is a, a you know problem of keratinization or shedding of skin so sometimes dandruff can also be caused by not cleaning the scalp regularly especially during covid when we all are working from home and we don't have to be zoom ready we just have to be zoom ready so some of us may postpone a hair wash so make sure that you wash your scalp at least 3 times a week if you have very long hair and for all my male patients and followers they can wash their scalp daily with a little amount of shampoo almost every day keep your scalp oil free you can go in for a shampoo that contains ph balancing agents my personal favorite is selenium sulfite yes you can use ketoconazole zinc pyrethion but they are little harsh on the hair texture so always wash your scalp apply your shampoo on the scalp keep for 5 minutes and wash it off also check inside you so sneha wants to know what is the reason for hair fall my dear sneha aditi there can be multiple reasons of hair fall as i said your hair is a continuously cycling organ so if somebody's got a fever like a covid or a dengue or there has been any major emotional trauma or there has been any surgery or something like delivery of a child that can also lead to transient shedding of hair in this case there is more shedding of hair so patient do may come after covid also with clumps of hair in the hand but the fact is it is a temporary interruption of your hair cycle 
then there are reasons like zinc deficiency there are reasons like vitamin b12 deficiency which can lead to diffuse alopecia thyroid and diabetes can lead to diffuse alopecia or hair fall there can be hormonal problems the you know especially polycystic ovarian syndrome so there is an increased androgen in the patient's uh, on the person's body and we all know that male hormone is such a bad enemy of hair growth and if that is elevated in a woman even that can lead to hair fall but i would always emphasize during every session that it's not the product it's inside you that matters more so there could be reasons like nutritional there could be reasons like hormonal there could be reasons like sometimes post menopausal women may also have hair thinning so that's basically more because of the increase in androgen levels so yes rishpa wants to know how much postpartum hair loss is normal so rishpa we talked that normally 90% of your hair grows and 10% of your hair always is in the resting phase so when when somebody is pregnant the good the best part of pregnancy is that there is no shedding of hair in the 9 months of pregnancy so your hormones make sure that like all other organs of your body and that little tiny baby bump growing inside you your hair also has a prolonged growth phase but the moment a woman delivers the body the hair has to go back to its original resting phase so whatever extra hairs grew during pregnancy will come into the telogen phase and exactly 3 months after delivery you may notice shedding of hair in clumps now if you are good in your iron and your calcium and there is no a uh, deficiency inside you this may last only for 3 months but if there are some confounding factors factors like you know people who do not take their iron regularly especially breastfeeding breastfeeding women they do have a deficit of nutrition in their body there is a protein loss a calcium loss so that may perpetuate or that may make the postpartum hair loss so if a hair loss is extending for more than 3 months so imagine your hair would start shedding somewhere when the baby is around 4 months so if this hair fall is still happening when the baby is 9 month or 10 months then you need to see your dermato trichologist to get it ruled out but you are expected to have a physiological hair fall after delivery so rajit wants to know he uh, about that he's 21 and uh, almost 40% is gray on his head rajit mr washney it's very important first thing is that you rule out a b12 deficiency and any nutritional deficiency second if it is a genetic thing in your family then yes supplements which contain calcium pantothenate may delay or arrest the hair grain we do have some good molecules that have come up like melitain if you apply melitain i won't say you would have reversal of hair grain but to some extent it can be controlled or arrested or stopped right so i think rajat you don't have to lose hope but it's time for you to see your dermato trichologist and you uh, get yourself tested i have put up few videos on my youtube channel about premature graying please go through that also don't lose hope there is some hope now for premature graying of hair so sneha also wants to know would vitamin b12 why not vitamin b12 is very very important sneha for any cell which rapidly divides and you know very well we have had discussion how a b12 deficiency can impact your nervous system your metabolism your skin itching so it will also impact the most rapidly dividing cell of your body that is the matrix cell or the stem cell from which hair grows so a b12 deficiency may lead to diffuse shedding of hair it may also lead to as rajat asked me premature graying of hair or if you already have gray hair and you have a vitamin b12 deficiency that may actually exponentially increase so i would say vitamin b12 like it's a very very important watch guard of your hair and skin health and it should be normal so sanya wants to know can we go for low level laser therapy when we are taking prp why not sanya i am personally a big big fan of now when we say low level laser we do not actually mean we're going to give you laser laser is a, a you know a monochromatic wavelengths while actually it is leds which are used and because they are not monochromatic we call them as low level laser light therapy it is very effective one you have to see whether your service provider has got a big led panel so more the better number two you need to do it twice a week that is one catch especially in covid time but i would say that low level laser therapy is 
definitely a very very effective add-on to your hair loss or hair thinning treatment so if you can go to your dermatologist and they have a good led in their center please go ahead i am a big fan of prf and low level laser light and you know there is no reason that you should not do it if you can right the only thing is i told you hair is a very slow growing organ so you need to continue for at least 3 to 6 months to see visible benefits and it works very nicely in my center we give low level laser therapy even for frizzy hair we also give it for hair loss and hair thinning and the hair loss that happens especially when we give minoxidil in the first few months so can i got a question can depo provera cause hair fall yes sometimes indirectly uh, you know depo provera is a high a depo dose of your progesterone it uh, may not cause hair fall directly uh, rather i would say progesterone in general can cause hair improvement but if depo provera is playing with your hormones in the sense if you have heavy periods and you're losing more iron that indirectly can cause hair fall so before blaming it all on your depo injection i would like to rule out uh, other things right so i don't think so directly it can cause hair fall but if it causes heavy periods or more number of cycles coming in a month that could indirectly lead to but i have to rule out every other cause before i put it on so shinam wants to know that hair comes out with the root tip shinam when you see your hairs coming out from the roots that's a sign of shedding of hair what we call as telogen effluvium telogen effluvium means that we talked about in the beginning of the session that 80 to 90% of your hair should be growing at one given point of time and 10% is normally shedding so if this ratio gets imbalanced you may uh, lose hair so commonest reason could be any it could be illness that someone had in a couple of months it could be a nutritional deficiency it could be any sort of mental physical stress that the patient has underwent it could be a surgery so there could be many reasons you need to talk to your dermatologist shinam and you need to rule out all nutritional deficiencies which is the commonest reason of shedding of hair right as we were talking after delivery also it is a telogen effluvium only thing is the trigger is delivery and it happens after 3 to 4 months of delivery so similar is the case with so when your hair comes out with root tip you're probably having chronic shedding of hair and this needs to be investigated a bit in detail now uh, shadha wants to know what is seborrheic dermatitis i must tell you seborrheic dermatitis is the inflammation caused by the sebum now sebum is your natural oil or lubricant that is present on your scalp so if your sebum changes and there is inflammation that is what we call as seborrheic dermatitis for a layman it is an excessive or the uh, severe spectrum of dandruff so normally a mild form of seborrheic dermatitis is dandruff but we doctors label it as seborrheic dermatitis when it is little more than mild and also you have it coming it to the areas like eyebrows and beard and you know areas of the skin that is the time we call it seborrheic dermatitis now nick wants to know how to grow beard now i must tell you nick though the scalp is a very different organ the beard growth is um, wrongly thicker the beard more the male hormone is a misnomer some people actually have less hair follicles on the beard area as well there are some um, you know very few disorders where actually patients have uh, no hair uh, on the beard apart from that beard growth is a function of the follicles that you have in the beard area technically no medication can be given which can actually increase the growth of the beard and a beard transplant would actually help you more and it is a very very effective uh, procedure for improving the beard growth so sian wants to know what foods can be eat sian i can give you a wide uh, spectrum of nutrients that is very important first and foremost is iron if it's a lady patient it's a female patient she needs to have a good amount of iron in her stores now we are not talking of a hemoglobin we are talking that your iron stores should be very rich the diet should have a good amount of protein because your hair is a proteinaceous structure now uh it is also very important that to absorb iron you take a lot of vitamin c in your diet 
you also need to have good amount of uh, you know micronutrients in your body there should not be any deficiency now these days if patient is taking you know pantoprazole or patient is taking antacid that can lead to deficiency of zinc sometimes biotin sometimes some blood pressure medicines medicines may also cause deficiencies prolonged uh, you know illness then the social drinking that people do over the weekends can lead to b12 deficiency so one is iron and protein is the it is a blanket treatment for all hair uh, uh, you know for all patients protein has to be very good your vitamin b12 is very important your vitamin d is very important it is also important that you absorb well so doctor i eat everything but still my parameters are not great means that there is a problem with the with absorption so as i said also it's important for your dermatologist to find out what exact medications are you taking if you have a patient who's been taking pantoprazole for years together for your acidity there are very high chances that your diet may be deficient in micronutrients it also depends upon the soil of the area that you live in so i don't completely deny when patients come and say like i practice in bangalore that when i go back to my hometown i found much more improvement so it could also depend upon the soil quality but those things are beyond me and you so what we can do is that we eat a healthy diet we have a good amount of protein in a diet too much carbs is bad so i won't say your roti rice is bad it's very important for you to have adequate amount of protein in your uh, carbs in your diet but a high glycemic index diet is definitely a big no no for your hair so you take a low carb high protein diet you should have lots of legumes and nuts in your diet for vegetarian patients nuts are a very big repository of uh, helpful micronutrients and you should also uh you know uh, what you call as place an important emphasis on absorption of diet so i always tell my patients it's important to enjoy your food as well so if we are hurrying through our meals all through the time the absorption would be affected if we are gently stressed throughout the day or we are sleeping late at night absorption of the nutrients would also be impacted right biotin is perhaps the most over emphasized and the probably the least important because biotin deficiency is only common in people who are on iv uh, you know or who are very sick and or who consume raw eggs so raw eggs is a big no no please also cut down on your tea and coffee consumption so if you are a coffee lover you know how down south we like to have coffee with breakfast but also know that tea and coffee don't allow absorption of iron so at least keep a gap of 2 hours between your meals and the tea so too much tea and coffee will also impair iron absorption and not be great for the hair so rajat wants to say i have oily scalp and dry hairs rajat it's very common in men to have oily scalp even women can have it but a young boy of 21 has a good amount of male hormone in his body and remember that the oil glands are located very deep inside the skin so the sebum's job or the hair the natural oil's job is to lubricate the scalp not your hair and that is where we indians go wrong we generally oil our scalps and we do not oil our hair so it is a hair uh, the body of the hair which requires conditioning and oiling so uh, always cleanse your scalp but oil your hair right so dry and frizzy hair with a oily scalp is a combination nobody has oily hair you have to your hair end has no way to moisturize itself so that's the place where you need to put the oil so girl wants to know how we control hair fall in monsoon yes you know to some extent monsoon is uh you know not only rimjim barse savan but also sometimes you know a rimjim gire hair so there is a seasonal shedding which is an ancestral trait in our body to some extent that can happen in monsoons make sure that your diet has more of protein please don't go for chai pakoda also don't gain weight because it's raining throughout the day so i can't go for my walk make sure you're physically active consume good amount of multivitamins in your diet personalized nutrition is something i always emphasize the patients upon at this during this season a good immunity is vital so legumes and nuts are a good source of zinc and 
also green leafy vegetables they are good source of iron and good amount of protein should be important it's very important that in monsoon season you keep your scalp clean generally in monsoons the humidity increases let's not talk about bangalore the rest of the country is piping hot at this point of time and humid so make sure that your scalp is cleansed nicely and uh, you know you wash your hair every day or alternate day also consume a nutritious and balanced diet cut down on your tea and coffee in monsoon people sometimes may end up having lots of such beverages you should avoid that if still hair fall continues get your nutrients checked and if still is not getting better you need to see your uh, dermatotrichologist uh, i zozo i already answered you how whether depopravra can cause or not do supplements work for hair loss shivina it depends on what supplement so i you know around 900 plus supplements are available on amazon without any background r&d so it's not that any supplement that you get is going to help you people are having biotin gummies now biotin is something that you would actually naturally absorb from your diet so the supplements that we prescribe you when you come for a hair issue is a mix of micronutrients so if there's biotin there is zinc there is chromium there is brewers yeast there's calcium pantothenate there is selenium all in a dose which comes under drug controllers so there is no excessive <clears throat> you know there is no 30000 something of biotin or vitamin d so you have to customize the supplement according to your hair issue and your age your nutritional status your other comorbid conditions so if i have a working woman who's say late 30 35 who's having borderline sugar cholesterol i would very well like to give her a combination of beta cetosterol omega 3 melatonin vitamin d while a young girl uh, you know um, almost of your age she we i would like to give her a mix of brewers yeast or something that has you know just um, the micronutrients and supplement so a customized supplement is also important but there is no one pill that's going to take your hair woes away because your hair i said is not only nutrition there are hormonal receptors there are your sleep receptors your nervous system your stress level so there are more than one factors hair loss is a multifactorial thing so just don't buy random supplements from um, your e-commerce sites most of them now vitamin the most commonly prescribed not prescribed the most commonly bought supplement by patients on their own contains vitamin a and vitamin e so for all my followers here vitamin a and vitamin e toxicity is a reality so they do not tell patients that ingestion of too much can lead to even worse problems than the original problem so i was surprised to see a uh, you know high level of vitamin a and e that people are taking you know unknowingly so get a customized supplement it would help and also get it tested what you don't have is what you need to supplement else a good and balanced diet is good enough do change in state increase hair fall yes shweta we did talk to some extent i feel when you go back from bangalore to your hometown there is less amount of stress there is a good amount of nutrition there are parents there there is a level of comfort there yes micronutrient deficiency in soil so there are soils which are deficient in selenium areas like the people who live in high hilly areas like tibet china or the higher reaches they are actually living in a soil which has less of it so thyroid issues and nutritional deficiencies are common in them at one point of time it was much more rampant now we have fortified foods and cereals coming up so sometimes your change in state can improve your hair fall because of the improvement in soil quality also the stress levels are much lesser when we are in a hometown isn't it so srinivas wants to know uh, he wants to apply oil mixing srinivas it's very common for many patients who apply coconut castor and you know some almond oil but i must tell you that oil cannot grow hair oil is a hair moisturizer so oil oiling is not what is causing hair improvement yes you i told in the beginning of the session that your hair root has got blood supply so massage is technically which can improve to some extent keeping oils on not washing the hair can only increase your scalp woes so you need to meet a dermatologist or a dermatologist so your dermatologist is also a trichologist so you have to go find out the cause if it is a nutritional hair loss if it is a hair shedding if it is something known as male pattern baldness because if it is a male pattern baldness or if you have recession of hairline then it's not going to help application of any oil or taking random supplements 
supplements you need to do something to prolong the growth phase of your hair you need to also curb or manage your male hormone levels either topically or orally or with some remedies that your dermatologist prescribes you so i don't think so srinivas that hair is uh, oils i probably in my opinion are quite overrated so nagarjun wants to know minoxidil is okay for all of course minoxidil i can't say it's okay for all as i said it's not there is no one tablet there's no no one shampoo one lotion that's going to work for all but yes if a person if a male or a female has hair thinning or uh you know there is also something known as chronic shedding of hair which leads to visibility of scalp minoxidil could be one option but then there are various contraindications also to minoxidil application for example if you're planning to preg uh, get pregnant or you're lactating it's not certainly a good choice for you and the uh, patients who are having just shedding of hair due to nutritional deficiency or post delivery they may not require it as well so you do consult your dermatologist before starting a uh, minoxidil that's not a stand out or a stand alone treatment but it is a unisex treatment both men and women can take it apply it it does not impact your hormones so many a times people ask me the doctor does it actually do something to your hormones no no not at all it prolongs the growth phase of the hair as long as you apply it so sinivas if you have lost hair you need to get a proper diagnosis done your doctor should check you clinically she should use a trichoscope to see what's the state of your hair follicles and depending upon that you should start a treatment so i would say that uh, supplements oils shampoos are uh, actually they are probably to some extent a little bit of gimmicks also you need a combination of many your doctor has to customize the treatment according to your scalp condition so ruhina uh yes your vitamin b12 vitamin d is low of course it would lead to hair loss as any other nutritional deficiency would but there are also sometimes i have seen that vitamin vitamins are important for hair growth in almost all causes of hair fall whether it is a male pattern female pattern baldness whether it is a shedding of hair whether it is an alopecia areata so having them uh proper is very very important having a normal level of b12 and vitamin d is a must if that does not help if your physician advises you supplements and it's still not helping you then you need the help of your dermatologist so what is the best time to take biotin supplements i don't think so basha ji it really matters absorption of biotin is very very good it is one of those micronutrients i prefer to give a biotin supplement in the day if my supplement contains melatonin i prefer to give it at night So Ruhina uh, how can you help your hair loss first is set your nutritional deficiencies correct uh, make sure that there's no iron and protein deficiency as well and if that's not helping you need your doctor to reset the internal clock of your hair so it's very important and Shweta has shifted to Ahmedabad and she's having major hair fall before Shweta I bad mouth them the mother a lot of friends uh, in from Ahmedabad and I love that place I think it's time for you to check your uh, vitamins and your iron and your protein so whether there's a nutritional deficiency whether there is a hormonal imbalance whether there is something else that is contributing to your hair fall so a consultation with your dermatologist trichologist or dermatologist would actually help you in finding out the cause nick we already talked there is no regimen for beard growth you might have to go for a hair transplant beard transplant and uh, zozo we have already replied to that what are the foods to add more vitamin b12 you know um, um akhi karuli the vitamin b12 is mostly a non vegetarian vitamin and for improvement of vitamin b12 we need good bacteria in our tummy so do take lots of probiotic like curd and buttermilk to improve b12 absorption you also should not have any acidity issues so if you are a person who skips meals and there's lot of acid being formed uh, then that might lead to a uh, vitamin b12 deficiency so eggs um, the cheese and milk are supposed to be good sources for vegetarians though i personally do not know and do not believe that it helps but sometimes even people who eat non veg may have deficiency because it all depends upon what is being absorbed so you eat non vegetarian food doesn't mean it's getting into your body as well so a blood test would help you ranju wants to know what would be the reason of upper hair lip growth ranju ji upper hair lip is uh, not exactly a very androgen dependent area 
yes um, uh, normally to some extent um, it depends upon the sensitivity of your hair re uh, receptors to your hormones so some patients may have a polycystic ovarian syndrome some patients may not have any pcod still have thick hairs on the upper beard area if if it has recently started becoming thicker then i need to rule out your you know your hormonal issues i need to rule out if there is any um, um you know adrenal hyperplasia or if there's any increased prolactin thyroid that can also sometimes lead to uh, thickening of the hair so what are androgen dependent areas androgen dependent areas means your chin your uh, upper lip the central part of chest upper part of abdomen upper legs upper arms so we scale uh, we have a grading you know ferriman galloway scoring and just having hair in one or two areas doesn't make anybody hair suit it depends on the scoring so if somebody is having very thick hair growth in all these areas we would call that as a severe hirsutism but as i said upper lip hair growth can normally also happen in certain women it may also happen in women who have hormonal issues but it doesn't happen with your hair supplement for scalp they are different right so the same i want to give you an example ranju the male hormone that gives men such a thick beard and mustache probably leads to baldness on the scalp so these both are different areas so many times many people followers ask us whether a supplement is going to cause hair growth on the body it doesn't they work in entirely different ways for pcos hair fall my dear mysterious girl for pcos of course we need to lose fat around abdomen if you have any you need to go for a pcod diet which is a very very healthy diet a low carb high protein diet is what's going to really help you you need to possibly also take a proper treatment so in pcos what happens is that the increase androgen level the increase insulin level doesn't support hair growth so we will have to artificially sort of you know give strength to your hair follicle so consult your dermatologist to put you on something topical as well but a pcod diet a low carb high protein diet weight loss and a very healthy and active lifestyle would go a long long way to help you but in my opinion pcos is actually a major cause of hair thinning hair fall could also be due to other factors like a vitamin b12 deficiency which is very very common in pcod patients we all know that b12 is the watchman of metabolism so if there is a deficiency that may lead to more hormonal issues so you need to see a dermatologist and get it checked in detail what precaution should we take for white hairs one is of course find out there should not be anything inside your body like a deficiency causing it and coloring your hair is something you can do to hide your grays uh, gray hairs doesn't signify uh, anything but yes if it is happening too fast too rapidly we have also found in some studies that that may be a sign of premature aging of hair follicle and it also indicates in certain patients a increased risk of heart disease so if you've grayed early and uh, you know you are a patient who's in a high stress job or who's having overweight issues or nutritional issues kindly fix that you can go for a ppd free color um you know ppd is a dye that is normally added to all the hair colors that you get in your market whether it's a professional salon or something that you get uh, from um, you know your um, over the counter shop so ppd is a dye which can cause pigmentation and those issues so if you're a first time hair color uh, you are trying to color your hair for the first time go for a ppd free color there are a lot of pharmaceutical brands which are safe so 19 year old can have supplements uh, very important rohina get the the blood work up done what is low needs to be supplemented as i told you earlier yes if the patient has deficiencies the do doctor should prescribe uh, oral supplements but please don't go on continue to having those supplements forever so you need to make sure that you get them uh, customized personalized by your doctor and have them for 3 months 6 months give breaks in between you do not have to be a continuous uh, supplementation unless you have a diagnosed absorption disorder but a 19 year old can be prescribed some supplements there is no problem in uh, taking supplements so prasanna how to remove dandruff during monsoon yes uh, you can remove dandruff but you can definitely prevent dandruff prasanna dandruff is not just flaking it's an inflammation of the scalp during monsoon if you're living in a coastal area hot area 
wash your scalp every day especially when nowadays people we also tell them use a low poo shampoo use a sulfate and parabens free shampoo so you have to apply the shampoo on the scalp keep for a couple of minutes and then wash it off you need to use a shampoo which contains a ph balancing agent like selenium sulfide ketoconazole and zinc pyrithion zinc pyrithion and ketoconazole are anti malassezia agent malassezia is the family fungus which is on our scalps which increases in dandruff and if still there is no respite you consult your dermatologist to get the issue fixed there could be any internal reasons also sometimes contributing to dandruff sneha wants to know any shampoo suggestion sneha there is a video on my youtube channel where i've specifically put how to read the label of a shampoo but any shampoo in my i am a big fan of caffeine based shampoo because it increases microcirculation to some extent having said that i also put a disclaimer it's not going to remove all your hair woes but if you're asking me specifically any shampoo that contains uh, you know caffeine uh, would help in also increase penetration of the actives of the medicine that your doctor prescribed you so you can go for caffeine based shampoo you can go for sulfate parabens free shampoos you can go for shampoo plus conditioner if you have dry and frizzy hair and amreshwar wants to know that his scalp is very oily even though it doesn't oil and he has a lot of dandruff see amreshwar you have to understand that your scalp also secretes natural oil and uh, if you are a young boy of 20 21 till 24 25 your male hormone is expected to be more than no uh normal so that may lead to an oily scalp the only thing you can do is possibly to wash your scalp almost daily and you can use an anti dandruff shampoo which contains zinc pyrithion selenium sulfide ketoconazole if that does not help then you need to see a dermatologist to find out don't apply oil at all if you have a oily scalp you can oil your hair but there is no need of applying oil on the scalp so it's very important for people to know that uh, you know amreshwar also wants to know how to control hair fall so it's very important that you uh, find out the cause why it's hair fall is it just hair fall or is it a hair loss sometimes there are boys and men who come with hair fall in the beginning but we do see a recession of hairline so the hairline starts you know proceeding back and uh, that is not just a hair loss a fall it's a hair loss and it that needs to be treated emergent way to prevent further recession because once a hair becomes a dwarf once it miniaturizes there is no way to get it back so treat your hair loss at the earliest if you are facing any thinning of the central part of the head or if you are uh, you know facing any recession of the hairline please consult your dermatologist uh, right away and uh, sneha this is exactly uh, we talked about that if you have lot of dandruff and you have a itchy scalp you need to wash your scalp more often don't wash don't apply loads of shampoo on the hair put it on the scalp also sometimes deficiencies like vitamin b12 can cause scalp itching so how to control hair fall and split ends we've been talking about how to control hair fall from the beginning uh, we can go for what is the cause whether it's just a hair loss or a hair fall how to prevent split ends split ends are basically due to weathering the um, you know there is very less support very less oil support to the hair ends of your um, the not the root the ends of your hair so one of the commonest reason people get split ends is that they comb during wet uh, they comb their wet hair don't do that so your hair should be damp not wet when you comb always oil your hair ends always make sure you put good amount of conditioner on your hair ends and avoid making making lot of braids and plaits and all those supplements oh sorry all those hair styles because that will weather out your hair shaft so shweta should i take vitamin e i told you shweta vitamin e is good if taken naturally too much vitamin e can actually cause hair loss so please be careful on taking random supplements for hair fall how to increase the length of hairs now my dear girl you are born with a certain anagen length and your hair cannot grow beyond that but a good iron and protein rich diet would certainly help you to increase the length of your hair can hair color or highlights cause graying of hair no mansi not at all it's a myth graying of hair is progressive if you have a nutritional deficiency hair would gray in a couple of um, you know months so the bad name comes to the hair color hair color and highlights may cause pigmentation on the face may increase your chances of getting melasma or black spots but they per se do not increase 
growing of hair man see so i have oily scalp and dandruff flakes which shampoo would be best any shampoo which i would say daily shampooing is very important for people who have oily scalp and they are fans of sulfate parabens free because they are, they are weaker detergents also have a shampoo containing selenium and zinc Pile wants to know controlling and length is so thin. What should I do? Pile, there must have been some other reasons that we would have talked about. It could be low ferritin. It could be also sometimes early stages of female pattern hair loss. And if you feel that a supplement is not helping and you want a volume increase, we might have to take you up for things like minoxidil to retain the hair volume. In women, it is sometimes very difficult to give a good volume of hair because women have lot of factors. I have to see. what is your iron status whether you are having any hormonal issues whether there is any cholesterol issues so all those factors once we improve also we need to sometimes give artificial support so i would say let's meet again and find out what can be best done for your thinning hair hair is not constant what we saw one year ago could have changed in the last one year every 3 months your hair is changing so preet um, yes any other option preet my dear i don't think so we have still got any option for apart from minoxidil when it comes to hair growth and volume improvement and minoxidil should be used till the time hair matters we've got more expensive options now but for hair thinning if you're not allergic to minoxidil all my best minoxidil is your first love don't leave it and my skin is oily what should we use we really cannot do anything to reduce your oil but we can keep your skin have a oil free look use a face wash which has a aha or a bha you have oil control cleansers containing witch hazel extract zinc mirastat prefer them you can use blotting papers so uh what can be the reason behind itching richer itching around the eyes could sometimes be due to contact dermatitis which may happen the commonest reason of itching around eyes is nail paint allergy it could also be dandruff it could also be some product that you've been using knowingly and knowingly or even a home remedy you need to see your dermatologist to fix it do moisturize the hair with a hypoallergenic moisturizer containing ceramide पी सी ओस हेयर थिनिंग के बारे में तो यही बताना चाहूंगी कि हेयर थिनिंग जो है वो एक ऐसी हेयर थिनिंग हमारे लिए एक एमरजेंसी है आपको मिनॉक्सिडल यूज करना है uh, हो सकता है आपके डॉक्टर मिनॉक्सिडल दें डिपेंड्स ऑन मेनी अदर कंडीशन वी विल हैव टू गिव यू दोज न्यूट्रियट्स विच हेल्प इन इम्प्रूविंग योर मेटाबोलिज्म पीसीओडी की डाइट खानी है काप कम प्रोटीन ज्यादा खाने हैं हमें पूरी कोशिश करनी है कि हम अपनी एक्सरसाइज बढ़ा कर रखें हमारे पेट के पास एक्स्ट्रा चर्बी नहीं होनी चाहिए सो पीसी we would require some support medical support and not just few random tips so i want you to see your dermatologist trichologist dry dark circles ke liye hamesha yaad rakhiye aapka under eye sabse dry area hota hai to dry skin se bhi dark circle ho sakte hain kam iron se bhi dark circle ho sakte hain dust allergy mein bhi dark circle ho sakte hain to hame unke uh, depending on the causative factors we have to treat that so tips for hair regrow due to corona don't don't panic it's a cycle imbalance jis tarah jeevan mein sab kuch comes back to normal your hair cycle would come back to normal your doctor can prescribe your nutraceutical supplement we can give you medicated peptides which will help you and uh, to make it get better faster i have a lot of dark circles what i can do without looking at you is that moisturize your under eye area check your iron and how to increase we have already talked about it this vitamin d calcium intake have some connection yes akhil uh, if your vitamin d is low you will not absorb calcium from your food so it's very important that's why calcium supplements always have a little amount of vitamin d with it so is well woman hair fall like good for hair fall anjali it is a very good supplement but you also need to see it is not going to take care of your iron deficiency or some hormonal issue so you need you can take it it's not a stand alone treatment what shampoo should i use for oily scalp we already discussed about it how to take care of oily skin ankur ji as i said we cannot remove reduce your oil but can give you a aha bha based cleanser if you have a very sensitive skin i would like to give you some cleanser with mandelic acid i want you to use a sunscreen which has got a mattifying effect i would love to give you a moisturizer which has oil control properties then there are three things that i want you to check when you buy a oil control moisturizer the one is zinc mirastat we have the um, you know which is a extract sodium pca or and zinc if you are acne prone ujwala ji so nice that you came and attended my session probably ujwala bakshi is my very good friend she is a nutritionist all of you can follow her handle if you wish to know more about nutrition because i feel there is no here 
uh, prescription without uh, the help of a nutrition expert. And uh, Sheetal wants to know uh, what is the skin routine for a college student. Sheetal, one thing is never think you're going to scrub your oil away or you're going to remove your oil away. So be gentle. Second, you can use a, if you have a very uh, sensitive skin, go for mandelic acid containing face washes, else go for glycolic or two percent salicylic acid containing face washes if you're going to college or you're standing at home nowadays you need to put a sunscreen even at home because cream is your new sun and avoid using toners and astringents if you have oily skin i am a, i'm not a fan of toners and astringents because i feel they rip your skin off protective barrier that it has on the skin you can use spring water uh, in place of that or a blotting paper if you want to have an oil free look you also get moisturizers with mattifying agents right you can sometimes pamper yourself with cowl and clay but i'm not a big fan of multani mitis as well because i know that in college time in that age your skin would um, be oily as well toner is not at all necessary not a big fan of toner cleanser is of course necessary never use soap soap is sin for face is that what i routinely tell my followers you have to get a face wash which is a sophisticated cleanser face wash is a type of cleanser so you need to cleanse your face using a face wash best suited to your skin toner is definitely uh, not very very important about acne scars how to avoid them you need to you need to treat pimples even if you cannot get a cure for pimples even if you cannot control your pimples you have to put an ointment you have to go to your dermatologist to uh, you know prescribe you some medication retinoids are the only ointment which prevents scar and which which is it is very important because once you get a scar we can only improve it we cannot remove it so ujwala ji should treated hair also be oil ujwala ji um, i would say i take your help often when it comes to the nutrition woes and would love to have a session again with you because we're getting a lot of questions about nutrients but yes your question is valid treated hair loses its natural um, you know um, there is a very outer protective layer of um, an omega 3 which coats our hair this gets damaged in treated hair so you would have to oil the hair ends of treated hair you would have to go for the shampoos especially for color treated hair you would have you can even go for hair masks this is one place where i allow people to use eggs and aloe vera so the uh, body not the scalp so treated hair should be oiled on the body of the hair not the uh, roots i hope it helps you which hair fall we can use kavya i have already told i am little against hair oils i like coconut oil the best um though it is available at home it's not so expensive you have moroccan and argan oils and what not in the market but nothing beats the penetration capabilities of coconut oil it's a, it's a very good oil moisturizer you can go for that does oily scalp cause hair loss no my dear monsoon dosa i don't know your name but yes oily scalp is also often accompanied by dyslipidemias so if you have borderline cholesterol or you know you you are overweight uh, if you are beyond 25 till 25 you may have a natural hormone which is high that causes oily scalp so if all those things are there or your male hormone is more then oily scalp and hair thinning would go hand in hand to some extent your statement is right and correct factually correct but it is not that oily scalp will make someone lose their hair they could be connected now when we blow dry our hair which kind of heat protection serum can be used you can use any heat protection serum but i would say avoid avoid blow drying and if you have to do do it at a good distance of 45 to 60 cm heat of any kind damages the disulfide links of your hair your hair is a protein structure it hates heat so my hairline is going back what should i do first and foremost thing is you need to go to your dermatologist your trichologist please do not uh, waste your money and time with supplements and oils and random advice if your hairline is going back you need to get it checked whether it is something known as female pattern hair loss there are treatments to prevent the further uh, recession of hairline there are treatments to even regrow your hair but i would like that uh, you consult a doctor and go at the earliest because if the hairline goes back that happens if your hair is slowly with every cycle becoming thinner that cannot be returned back so earlier the better right 
so thank you sneha for liking it is there any side effects of minoxidil there are two side effects headache allergic reaction and in women it can cause hair growth on the face especially if they're using high doses or an unsupervised form may cause scalp itching sometimes but there are now good preparations available which do not have this complaint so you can go for a uh, uh go uh, consult your dermatologist before you start applying minoxidil on your own usha wants to know that uh, she has huge hair loss i think you need we've already talked about you need to look at your endocrine your nutritional status and um just with you i have my friend ujjula ji who keeps on posting good things about nutrition good a good amount of protein is important for iron absorption is i think what i heard in one of her sessions so you need to take care of your diet you need to take care of your weight so if you want a great hair you need a overall great health so also exercise take care of your stress sleep on time right so it's very very important and sushruta wants to know how to get rid of acne scars we cannot get rid of acne scars yes i said i said it right we can remove we can reduce it we can make it better we actually replace your scar with a lesser prominent scar so we call it a scar remodeling and not scar removal and acne scars would require a, because it's visible on the skin but you have to see hair is a skin is a um three floor structure so you are sitting at the top of the second the floor or the roof of the second floor and collagen is the first floor so you need to penetrate through the second floor using a micro needling rf or a laser to treat acne scars if it is just the red spots or the black spots that pimples have left behind then chemical peels or medical modalities be of help laser toning can be of help too so you need to consult sushrut uh, your dermatologist who will tailor stitch the treatment according to your type of scars if it's a rolling kind of scar subsection would be good enough so thank you i am so glad that you liked it nidhi wants to know which sunscreen to use for daily use nidhi sunscreens you know i generally not a good example to say publicly but i always say sunscreens are each sunscreen that your doctor prescribe is a blind date so you try many before you get the right one i would say if you are acne prone use a non comedogenic sunscreen gel sunscreen matte based sunscreen if you are a dry skin use a cream sunscreen if you, somebody has brown patches i know you don't have they can go for tinted sunscreens and if you're confused that i don't know whether i'm oily or dry you can go for emulsion sunscreens i'm going to put up a video on youtube soon nidhi for you so that should help rajat says that it was available she has so much gray hairs on her head no rajat hair coloring doesn't lead to more grays graying is a progressive phenomenon you need to check her test i put up a lot of videos on youtube channel of mine which goes by my name dr divya sharma please watch that encourage your sister to go for it hair color causes more hair graying is a misnomer it's a myth how to remove stretch marks my dear girl stretch marks are like scars acne scars they're visible on the skin but the level is again the collagen so you cannot remove it with the oil or a stretch mark cream but we can remodel your collagen by micro needling by fsr by laser what should be the skin care routine for 25 year old nidhi i also have a video on that but i would say skin care routine it should not be a cleanser toner moisturizer it should be a cleanser suited to your skin you're a dry skin use a a uh, soap free cleanser your oily skin go for aha or bha cleanser use vitamin c every day use a serum if you have dry skin use a gel based vitamin c if you have oily skin and use a capsule form if you don't know which category we belong to and sunscreen i know that nidhi you're working from home so screen is your sun don't forget to apply sunscreen even when you sit in front of your phone or your camera listening to me i have my sunscreen on by the way so cleansing vitamin c and sunscreen is a must for any 25 year old rather at every ages but specifically for your skin type shivam how to solve receding hairline shivam you need to go to a dermatologist and try to control the recession by using the appropriate treatment ranju says there is thick hair growth in upper lip and chin before consulting dermatologists you need to get your 
free testosterone, your prolactin, your thyroid levels test. You need to get an ultrasound done to rule out PCOD on fifth day of the menstrual cycle. And uh, Payal, yes, we have online video consultation. Um, and the details of my consult number are on my Instagram bio. And please DM me your number. We'll reach out to you. Scalp itching is a bad sign. Yes, Anjali. I have very couple of minutes left. But I would say yes. You may get pain, pulling pain in the hair roots if hair is about to fall. So this is known as trichodynia. There can be pain in the hair roots. And um, treatment for dandruff is something we discussed. Does the tap water bath cause hair loss on dandruff? No. You don't have an easy solution to hair loss and dandruff, sleeping late at night, common in Bangalore, not eating on time, common in Bangalore and eating more outside the house is also common in Bangalore. So now you can judge what possibly is the reason. Hard water can improve, uh, you know, impact the texture, but doesn't may not um, do much for your hair loss or hair fall. So um, home remedies for dry skin are none. I want you to use gentle cleanser, use moisturizer, which has a ceramide. Use a sunscreen which is cream based. For oily skin, don't go for serums, go for gels. So if there have been any questions or concerns have not been able to address during the live session, please uh, DM us or uh, put it in the comment section below. I would reach out to you personally. And please also let us know if you want me to discuss something in particular for our next uh, monthly live session. It was wonderful to have you all. I still have some great questions coming up which I would take up in the subsequent sessions. Thank you all for taking out time on a working day in an evening uh, to be with us. And, um, um, you know, I would love to personally thank you, um, but I don't think so I can. But thank you so much for joining me in. And uh, you can follow our Instagram page if you want us to talk about something in particular. I would not mind posting a video just for you. Make sure that you get the right information. Don't fall prey to all the advertisements that you come across. Hair loss and hair thinning is a scientific problem and it has scientific solutions as well. Thank you all for joining me in today for my Insta Live session. And... Um, do let me know whether you enjoyed it. So for healthy hair, I wish you all a healthy you. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you.